Hi, Dominic. How you doing? I have your, I have your, I have you queued up right here. Here you are. Okay. Um, and then I have your layers palette right over here, and we're ready to go. So the first thing I want to mention is that you, you know technically, and uh, you're showing a good um, technical proficiency um, in, with your masking techniques in Photoshop. And let me just show you really quick how I check that. I, I mean, I just take a look at first. First thing I look at is to see are there um, thumbnails for layer masks. So once there are, I'll just come over here and I'll shift click one just to take the background away. I mean, to um, I'm sorry, to turn the, the uh, mask off, revealing the background, just to make sure that the masking was done correctly. And then all of your layers, it clearly has been done correctly. So great job there. Will this piece grade well? Yes, it will, because of the fact that you're, you're showing good technical proficiency thus far with the um, task at hand. In terms of the um, typography in the background, we have had so many type tutorials that I had placed in the, the class last week that I, I was a little bit, I, mean, I was hoping that you guys, well, I was hoping really, Dominique, that you would have taken a little bit more incentive and maybe taken a couple of those tutorials to really get your creative um, sparks going, so to speak, um, in terms of creating some really cool text for your computer critter, Chris. Um, this is a good start, but basically all you have here is a, a stroke on your, your type. I mean, you have a drop shadow, but it's barely, barely, barely visible. So, but you have that stroke, so you have very minimal type um, effects. And I, I'd like you to work a little bit on that, try to get us something really cool and unique there. Background's not working. Why? Because it has nothing to do with the narrative. You're not really setting up any sort of a narrative with this background. The background here is neither supporting nor is it a detriment to the narrative at hand. It's just non-existent. For example, computer critter Chris, let's put him in a computer room stealing information from the mainframe. I don't know, wiring up to the mainframe and stealing juice out of it. You know, let your imagination flow. I mean, um, this guy could be in, a, in an office building. Maybe he f lurks around at night. Who knows? But just kind of floating there in front of a yellow black, black background just isn't giving us the narrative that is necessary in order to create this visual explosion in the viewer's mind where we go, boom, whoa, this is cool, man. That's a computer that creature's made, a made out of computer parts, and he's stealing juice from the mainframe or whatever, something like that. But do you know what I'm saying? But, okay, so, and everything is cool. Um, look, I'm, I don't know, I said this last week, but is a microwave a computer? I mean, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't know. I think a microwave's an appliance. So let's try to keep this computer oriented, okay? Really computer oriented. Yeah, technically there's a little computer in a microwave, but it just doesn't make any sense to have this computer dude with a microwave head. You know what I'm saying? Try to give him some hands and a neck and some fingers and try to, you know, really, really work him and finesse this dude so he's super cool and interesting to look at. All right? Cool. Thanks.